Hi, everybody. Um, so this is a weird time, weird Christmas. So my name's Hilary Wainwright, and you, I've met many of you. And this is what I miss this year, because one thing I've really enjoyed ever since I was involved in Red Pepper, the well, very beginning, 25, 26 years ago, um, is like going around the country meeting you and getting feedback and answering your questions and, and just getting to know you so that when we edit the magazine, we are editing it not for some sort of black hole, or black mass of people, just sort of general mass of people, but, but for, for individuals that we know and, and have got different interests and different, different passions and different politics and different identities. Anyway, so I miss that and I hope post-vaccination I'll be doing that again and have the odd comradely hug or two. Anyway, so my um, involvement with Red Pepper goes back right to the beginning. So it's with great pleasure that I'm introducing not just myself, but the fact that we've now got this fantastic group of new editors. Maybe first I should say that we've had one or two brilliant organisers who've, who've moved on. So Liam Shivrastava, um, who was our organiser <clears throat> about till about a year ago, and who's now gone on to the Institute of Race Relations, where you know, he'll play a brilliant role for a, a wonderful organisation that we worked with um, for a long time. But he's been replaced by an equally brilliant young organiser, Charlotte Austin, who's based in Durham, I'm happy to say. I used to work in Durham and I always connect it to the Durham Miners Gala. And um, we'll be there in ex extra force this year in July, I hope, post-vaccination. Um, so then there are all these new editors that are going to introduce themselves and I have to say that every editorial meeting I've learned new things from them and I think you will too. I think the magazine, you know, it's always benefited from new young people coming in and because we're so lacking in resources, those people have quickly became, become central to the work of the magazines. Well, there's lots to say about this year and I think the magazine will reflect this combination of, on the one hand, you know, a dismal year, both the pandemic and the tragedies, you know, personal tragedies that's involved, and just, and also just the kind of chaos and the way the government's turned this health crisis into, um, you know, a bonanza for corporate profit. Um, but on the other hand, we've witnessed this, this sort of, the fact that that human instinct of solidarity and that creativity has not been crushed. So all the mutual aid networks, the workers who've been driving the, the transformation of airplane factories into making ventilators, all the health workers who've, who've made that extra effort. It's only due to them that the health service has, has been able to, to sustain itself and provide the care that's needed. So there's a lot on which the renewal of the left can build. And I hope that it's going to be reaching out to those people who are illustrating daily what a society torn by the many could be like that will be the basis of renewing the left not the the internal wrangles against a purge by one of the most dire labor leaders we've ever had and you know obviously we must stand up for democracy and free speech in the labor party and elsewhere but we've got to reach out and reach those people who are already organizing on the basis of the values that we stood for um, last year and in, in supporting Jeremy Corbyn uh, and will continue to develop those uh, those values won't won't be crushed also just before I go because I mustn't go on there's a lot of other people to speak I think one of the messages of this Christmas is the breakup of Britain I've, we are seeing the growth of the independence movements which are movements not of ethnic nationalism but of a desire for democratic self-government and, and I personally would like to see that as being a theme that Red Pepper pursues with you and with your feedback. So just to say, you know, please spread the word about Red Pepper. Please continue to support us. We do need not only your subscription and your friend's subscriptions. You know, please see yourself as an ambassador for Red Pepper, but also any financial support, you know, just those monthly extra donations really keep us going. And if you happen to have a little bit more to give us, that would be great. We'll definitely, you know, um, fulfil your, um, your, your investment, not financially, but, but politically, which is what we need. We need an infrastructure of 
left radical transformative communications and i think red pepper having existed for so long is is key to that but we're never we're always as it were fraternal we welcome navara new internationalist tribune you know um we have positive and you know fraternal sororial relations with them so over to charlotte Hello everyone, I'm Charlotte and in August I joined the Red Pepper team in the role of coordinator. So my role as coordinator involves working on subscriptions, marketing, social media, events and various other admin tasks. So I'm not involved in the writing, editing or commissioning of articles, but part of my job involves making sure those articles have as big a possible a life outside the magazine as possible and linking up Red Pepper with other left-wing organisations and grassroots struggles. On that note, we've run some events this year which we're really proud of. For example, we ran a panel on the, on the revolutionary potential of video games in an attempt to kind of counter the cultural hegemony that um, the right wing has over video game culture. We also ran a panel on racial inequality featuring Paul Gilroy and Lola Olufemi. Um, we interviewed members of Momentum's National Coordinating Group on Facebook Live. And lastly, we co-hosted the launch of the Socialist Register 2021, which this year is about digital capitalism. So, a bit about myself. I'm from County Durham, and before I worked for Red Pepper, I used to sell copies of Red Pepper at the People's Bookshop in Durham, which those of you who've been to the Durham Miners Gala might be familiar with. Joining the Red Pepper team has been the best bit of a truly awful year. Um, I'm so proud to work for such a legendary socialist publication with such a rich history. I personally got involved in politics during the first Corbyn leadership campaign because he was the first politician who I ever felt stood up for people like me. I feel confident that organisations such as Red Pepper can harness the energy of people who got involved in politics due to Corbyn. Um, especially because it's such an internationalist publication that exposes people to international struggles beyond which um, is often talked about in, in British left-wing circles. Um, so all of this work that I've described is only possible because of the support of our subscribers. When you subscribe to Red Pepper, you're not just helping to fund an alternative media in Britain. You're also helping to support precarious young journalists up-and-coming illustrators, grassroots activists and organisations, and so on. Um, if you have any suggestions for what you'd like to see in the magazine, or especially any collaborations we can do, or, or any organisations we could get involved with, um, please give me a shout, um, because I'd, I'd be more than happy to help as our subscribers are what gives us our purpose. Have a Merry Christmas! Um, as merry a Christmas as you can have and let's hope we have a better, brighter, more socialist 2021 from all of us at Red Pepper. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Siobhan McGurk and I'm an editor and columnist at Red Pepper. I've been involved with the magazine for over a decade now. I first met Hilary in 2008 when I was a student in Manchester and she encouraged me from our first meeting to uh, be writing and thinking uh, in really expansive ways and really so much of my political thought and career as a journalist and academic have been influenced by her guidance. I'm sure many of you could say the same whether you've met her or just read her, read her work. I've seen a lot of changes over the years at Red Pepper but this year in particular has been quite different from the rest. That's for all the pretty obvious reasons, as well as some quite significant behind the scenes changes that I'd like to tell you about. In December 2019, we decided to restructure our ways of working quite significantly, determining to expand the editorial team and committing to offer to pay our contributors as a, as a matter of course. We've always been in a really precarious financial uh, position at the magazine and we've in the past relied very heavily on a great deal of voluntary contributions. We recognise that offering contributors fees should be a complete norm and doing so over the past year has really allowed us to better support our cast of amazing writers. We remain dedicated to uh, supporting grassroots and emerging voices in, in particular and that's really guided our ethos and activities. 
not only in a financial sense, but also in the way that we work very closely with writers. And this year we have run a number of different training sessions on things like sub-editing, commissioning, and at The World Transformed we ran a workshop on developing and pitching article ideas. The response from participants was, was really uh, great and it was a wonderful session and I particularly am looking forward to running more of those kind of workshops in, in the coming year as we seek to give back to our community and, and offer to support so many uh, people with a lot of things to say. Our new editorial team are bringing new insights and new networks into the fold and are allowing us to commission an incredible array of writing from the UK and the international left. This year we've seen the views from workers impacted by the pandemic on our pages and that's from doctors to delivery drivers to supermarket employees. We've shared analyses of Brazilian oligarchical politics and on the ground reports from the Bolivian election. We've had reflections from the Arab Spring, again from people who were there 10 years ago and have a lot to say on, on the past, presence and futures of struggles. We've seen critiques of disaster capitalism in times of COVID and Brexit, deepening our understanding of uh, already uh, disastrous uh, uh, conditions. We've seen scientific insights on the climate emergency and held strategy debates over the soul and future of the Labour Party, among so many other uh, incredibly um, engaging uh, articles that we've, that we've published and we're proud to have published over the last year. And all of this has been possible because of your continued support, which has allowed us to retain a strict ethical advertising policy, to keep our sliding scale subscription rates, which allow readers to pay what they can afford, to support us a little bit more if they can, and if they can't, to still have access to the content that we, we produce for everyone, really. And it's allowed us to maintain an independent editorial line, which as media... Disappointments over the past year, not only, but the but recent years, um, it's becoming ever more apparent, um, if, if there was any doubt remaining, that an independent media is, is so vital to the, the continuing of, of, uh, of democratic practices around, around the world and in the UK. So thank you for, uh, for uh, supporting us uh, during, during this particularly difficult year, which has uh, caused financial challenges as well as uh, so many other challenges for so many people. We hope to continue our great work and also build on it in the year ahead. Our plans for 2021 include uh, maybe even bigger changes, um, including, including offering new and different ways for you, our readers and supporters, to shape and influence our direction. We'll be coming to you and asking for your ideas and your guidance. We also hope to make significant improvements to our website and to run a variety of events, hopefully live around the UK, that feature engaging debate as well as opportunities for skills development. You can look forward to our coverage of fragmentations and nationalism as we debate the future of the disunited kingdom and commemorate 100 years since the partition of Ireland. And really, I think it's an important period to be looking at uh, borders and conflicts the world over, and we expect that to be a, a major element of our, our coverage in, in, in 2021. We'll also be assessing the legacies of the Indignados movement and the Occupy movement and focusing on workers' rights and unions strategies in a year that does promise to uh, present uh, new um, challenges uh, to build on, on the, the tough year that's just passed. That said, community has never felt so important as it does now and all of this that Red Pepper does is only possible because of you, our supporters. So thank you again so, so much for helping us build ever stronger foundations for, uh, for Red Pepper and really the, the global left. We're wishing you as safe and as peaceful an end 2020 as we can possibly have. And that's from everyone at Red Pepper. Thank you again and all the best. Hello to the girls and the gays. Uh, kidding. Hi everyone. I am Umar and I was lucky enough to kick 2020 off by joining Red Pepper as a member of the editorial collective. Uh, I first came across Red Pepper a few years ago when I followed a cute person to a Red Pepper event and picked up a copy. Nothing happened with the person, but it was the start of a beautiful relationship with Red Pepper and I'm really pleased we can make it official now. Um, 
At that time, lots of us who were newer to the movement and to left bases were only hungry for left media, in particular, new left media. What Red Pepper represented, and, and still represents, is a rare example of left media that's endured, that's had, that has history and deep roots as well, and been an active participant at so many junctures of, of struggle over the past decades. Um, I'm really proud to be able to say that I work at a publication that takes this premise, the idea that we need media by the movement and for the movement. I'm a bartender, journalist and organiser based in South London. So I first came to, to kind of left spaces uh, through a wildcat strike at my local pub and then I got more and more involved in trade unionism. Um, I most, spend most of my time, my free time, organising with South London Bartenders Network. So we organise hospitality workers um, across South London. Um, but I've also been involved in migrant solidarity activism, anti-hostile environment campaigning, particularly with lesbians against support the migrants. Um, as a pandemic hit, I've been involved in local mutual aid networks, anti-gentrification and climate justice campaigns as well. And in all of these spaces that I've been really lucky to be a part of, um, I keep returning to, to the idea of constructing communities of care um, as an organiser. And I'm, I'm lucky enough to say that Red Pepper, the Red Pepper team for me has become one of those communities of care. Um, but I'm also really interested in looking at how we can kind of, how we can play a role in constructing those for you, how we can, Red Pepper can play a role in bringing people from across these diverse movements together to learn from one another, not just as, as a space for comradely debate about theory, but also practical advice on strategies for resistance. Um, it's been really humbling to, to join the editorial team and work alongside some individuals I really admire and to be able to commission so many more. Uh, it's, it's hard to pick a, I don't think I could pick like a favourite piece, there have been so many, but one that really stands out is uh, by Ollie Carter Esdale, Pint, uh, Patriotism and Precarity, from the autumn issue of 2020. Um, it does a really good job of teasing out the role that pubs play in the far-right imaginary. Uh, I might be biased in picking that one as a bartender. Uh, but apart, you know, apart from that, is one thing that really stands out to me with Red Pepper is the internationalism, the internationalist perspective, and the commitment to centering workers and organisers and ordinary people, as well as thinkers and authors and journalists. That's really important to me too. So if you're if you're one of the people who's supported us through a subscription, through a donation. You know, thank you. I just want to thank you so much for supporting Red Pepper and independent left media, and also for contributing towards my heating bill this winter. <laughs> um, I'm wishing you all the best for 2021. You've made it through 2020. You're doing amazing. Love and solidarity. Catch you on the other side. Hi, I'm Ananya. I joined the editorial team in March this year. Um, and I was really excited to join Red Pepper um, because I just really admire how they've been platforming marginalised voices um, and just really diverse um, progressive and left movements for 25 years now. Um, so I identify as an intersectional and socialist feminist. Um, I've also been involved in anti-racist uh, politics, environmental and migrant rights campaigns. Um, I'm currently active with South Asia Solidarity Group, which is a movement um, supporting um, uh, or in solidarity with uh, people's movements in South Asia, including um, those resisting Hindutva fascism in India currently. Um, and this is also an area that I'm really interested in articles wise. Um, so um, anti-fascist politics and protests in India and South Asia. Um, and I'm also really interested in arts and culture. So um, I have a background in literature um, outside of this. I'm an arts journalist myself. Um, and in this vein, I just wanted to quickly recommend a couple of articles from Red Pepper this year that I would say are highly worth reading. Um, so one of those pieces is from our latest print issue called Struggles for Truth, which is out now. Um, and for our culture section, um, this issue, we focused on a the theme of branding and sponsorship. Um, so this piece is by Keith McKenna. It's uh, called Who's Writing the Script? And it focuses on theatre and the role of the prevent strategy in funding theatre. Super interesting, would highly recommend that one. 
Um, and then the other piece I want to recommend is from our website. It came out earlier this year um, and it's called Gender, Class and Cliché in Normal People by Frances Hathaway. Again, super interesting. Would highly recommend that one. Um, I just wanted to end by saying a massive thank you to all our supporters and subscribers for all of your support over this really weird, really tough year. We genuinely couldn't have done what we do without you um, and wishing you all the very best for 2021 and lots of love. Hi everyone, my name's Jake, I'm from Brighton and one of the new editors at Red Pepper in 2020. I wanted to join the team because Red Pepper has been an integral part of the left for so many years now and I wanted to join the team and help play a role in the magazine's development going forwards in the years to come. I also wanted to bring my passion for bringing to life stories, reporting and critical engagement with the most pressing issues of today. So I've been an activist for well over a decade now with many of my formative years kind of spent in education campaigning around tuition fees and EMA in my teens. But since then I've been involved in a wider array of social justice issues campaigning and then kind of moving into working on climate and environment. So I have been involved in sort of anti-fracking activism through to supporting the youth climate strikes over the last couple of years before moving into my current role where I'm working on campaigns around COP26, the UN climate talks that are due to take place in Glasgow in 2021. And I'm hoping to bring with me my experiences learnt throughout these years in campaigning whilst also sort of an extensive knowledge of the climate organising space movement building alongside my passion for economic transformation that will create an equitable and safe world for everyone. So thinking back over the course of the last year or so, two of my favourite articles that have come out have been the two-part uh, interview series with Sir David King, where he delves into the science and government handling of the pandemic. And secondly, Swords into Plowshares by our co-founder, Hilary Wainwright which really takes a look at the potential for manufacturing conversion that is ultimately needed for tackling the climate crisis. And this was demonstrated by workers in Wales that converted their assembly line to produce ventilators. But most importantly, as we round up 2020, I wanted to say a massive thank you to you, our subscribers and supporters. You're a vital part of ensuring that we have a critical, independent and fearless media that can really report on the issues and tell the stories that are vital in challenging our current system. Thank you once again, and let's see Red Pepper go from strength to strength in 2021.